G'day guys. Just a quick video showing you guys how to um, use the GoPro Hero 8 and GPS overlays. Um, this is through the use of Strava tracking. So, um, a few things I'll just point out. I got the GoPro Hero 8 that I use and I originally bought this because it comes with the GPS tracking abilities. Um, and it also has the hypersmooth stabilization. So I didn't want to go and buy a gimbal, didn't have that much cash, but um, figured I'd get the um, GoPro Hero 8 because the videos I saw look pretty good in terms of it versus the um, GoPro 7 um, in terms of the hypersmooth and stabilizing your videos, especially for mountain biking, um, and especially at Narang, which is basically like riding a quarry. So a couple of things I started to learn when I bought the camera. One, that the GoPro f um, actual software to to add your GPS overlays sucks and you can only really use the app um, you can't really use the old software or anything like that which was a bit of a bummer I was like oh thanks GoPro like you've given us these capabilities but haven't really given us the software to use them properly so um, what I started to do was play around with the GPS stuff and um, of other brands like Garmin um, so a few things that I started to learn was that the GPS tracking kills your battery um, one thing I did do was 3D print, um, that's shit falling over, um, was 3D print this particular mount, just because I read that the, um, the GPS receiver is at the top of the GoPro, so if it's facing up, it would receive better signal. Um, so, as you might know, if you mountain bike, you have to really mount the GoPros upside down to get the right view on a chest mount, but, um, 3D printing this banana mount, as I call it. Um, meant that it could stay upwards and I thought oh, that might help but didn't really help at all so I quickly learnt that um, I shouldn't really try to track the actual ride that I do um, with the GoPro and that's because it's um, it's in the middle of a forest so it doesn't have a very clear view of the sky it's um it is a really nice like um, feature of the GoPro if you're out in the open I'm sure but my Strava um, my GoPro tracking was crap like any kind of switchbacks was just like a straight line um, so I then went to trail forks and I was like I was downloading trail forks um, GPX and then changing my GoPro data like editing the GoPro data using Garmin Basecamp to like match it that was such a pain in the ass so I do not recommend doing that what I do recommend doing is using your Strava tracking um, so the idea was that um that's all oh, that's my bike um, that's the GoPro set up there, a little foam thing that does bugger all but kind of limits the wind noise around the microphones. But um, yeah, I um, I go to Strava and every time I film, every time I ride, I usually track it on Strava and um, it's a lot more accurate. This is just using my phone in my pocket as well, so a lot more accurate than the GoPro was. Um, and basically you go to the Strava website on your computer and you can download the GPX data. So that's the first thing you'll need to do if you want to follow this process is um, track your ride or whatever you're filming, your drive or whatever on Strava um, and then just go to the website and download this GPX file. So a GPX file as opposed to a GPS, it's just a file type name. Um, but the software that I do use is Garmin software. So it's the Garmin Verb Edit software and it understands um, and reads GPX files. So um, download that Strava GPX file and then you obviously chuck in your um, clips using this import option from um, your ride so whatever clips you got you import them just hit import other to import from your actual computer because um, I'm not using a verb but then it's pretty pretty fun little software to be honest like if we just go and create a test video um, it's got really cool features and compared to the GoPro, the GoPro app I tried to use a couple of times but there's very limited um, options um, for that. So I um, I switched to this Garmin stuff and it's really fun to use so you can customize a hell of a lot of stuff with this and if you're into coding you can actually create these graphics from scratch um, but I'm not going to do that because I'm not that good at coding but um, essentially you pull in your, um, your clips and I've already associated um, my GPS data with this, but I'll just delete it just to show you how, how you go about doing it um, from the get-go. Um, so this um, clip down here, you can see this little icon here means that it's already got its um, GPX file associated with it, but 
I'll just go into here and remove it. Um, so we'll just remove that. So this is what it will show up. It'll have a little dash through it because you don't have any G, um, G metrics data. So you can see here. So on your um, your G metrics option on the left here, you just go across to data, and um, you just say import G metrics. So it's no GPS device detected. That's all good. You go over here to on my computer. And on my computer, you're going to do a manual selection of that GPX file that you downloaded from Strava. So, we click Browse, and it freezes for half a second. So, I'll go to my GPX files here, and we'll choose Into the Darkness is the, um, the GPX file that has this particular ride on it. So, we hit Open, it'll load the log, and um, we'll say Use this log. So when you say use this log, it'll add the GPX file to the um, to the video. But obviously, you need to kind of tell it where this video starts within that GPX file. So with the um, data tab selected up here, you can um, go to Gmetric Sync. So you might have to play around with the start time as well. But on the left here, the first thing you want to do is just um, Usually I just find like a really recognizable corner. So this first left hand switch back here. I know exactly where that is on the map. So I can um I can zoom in here. And we can see that um I can start the find the start of the trail which is about here. It's a trail called Goanna at Narang National Park in um Queensland, Australia. And it cruises along and then we have um this that switch back, yeah, I believe it's that switch back there. Um, so you just kind of play around with this to make sure it's traveling in the right direction, and all that kind of fun stuff. So we'll go down here and we'll put this marker bang on that corner there, and then we just hit done. Sometimes this does wig out a little bit. If I move this video now, this will reset like. And um, play up a bit, so just make sure you you set it at the right location, and um, hit done straight away. If it's like really precise, you can use these um, the little arrows, which is cool. And a lot of the time, just be careful. Like if you've sat there at the start of a trail for like five minutes, you might put the marker there, but it might be at the start of that five minutes that you sat there. So just usually choose a point mid ride that you're actually moving, so it. Um, you don't have five minutes of you just sitting there on the GPS data, which obviously wouldn't show up because you'd be writing in the video. If you ever do that, it might sound confusing right now, but if you ever do that, you'll know what I mean. Um, so hit done. So that's sweet. So it's got the GPS data synced up now. Um, and this is um, the overlay, so the templates. So you can go into templates, and I've created like my um, my own template, and I've created that just using the gauges option here. So you can. Um, you can go to gauges, select a data type, and we'll go distance. So distance, all these different gauges you can play with. Um, this is one that I did create myself, and it's like you can add like pictures as the little background of the gauge and all that kind of stuff. So you can see there that it counts up from that. You can change the fonts of what it says. Like you can get some really nice detail using this. Um, but there's a lot of default ones here which are really cool as well. Big word of warning though, and something that really just, it's the one thing that really sucks with this software is that the elevation wigs out. Like you you can chuck an elevation map on here, right? Oh, that one's really big. Um, so this elevation map, and that's something that's really helpful for obviously mountain bike riding and running and all that kind of stuff, would be elevation. So you'd think the Garmin would sort this issue out, and it's an issue that I've found um, like posts about for like, the last like three or four years and it still hasn't been fixed but essentially elevation shows up really nice on this preview it all looks good you position it you're like yes yeah, sweet it's going to show the elevation and then when you export this bloody video it just doesn't show up like i've tried so many different workarounds to try to figure it out if you have like a solution for that let me know in the comments but like I just couldn't figure it out. I figured it out once and it worked, but then I couldn't remember what it was that I did. And I, I'm pretty sure I tried what I did and it just didn't work after that. So it shows like just a blank um, rectangle there and it says elevation, but it just does not export the actual elevation. 
Um, and yeah, once again, it was really frustrating because Strava has good elevation mapping and in comparison to GoPro, which said I was going downhill when I was going uphill. So that's one thing that sucks about this software still. So I just don't have an elevation thing on here. If you ever watch my videos on one elevation, just go to Trail Forks and it has the elevation on that pretty accurately. Um, it does use these. It does show these elevation um, the gauges for like the um, just the number I guess but you want the graph the graphs cool because it shows when you're going up and down and steepness I guess it would show um, these numbers I mean yeah they're not that impressive but um lots of different things you can play with on here um, and yeah there's um there's a good amount of like gauges you can add you can change the appearance change the colors once you um you can scale them as well as so make them bigger and rotate them wherever you want on screen. Um, so yeah, you can just move them around and all that. And then once you've like set up a template that you want to use on several videos, you just go over here and click this item down here, which will save your current template. So um I think the data preset I don't even know what that means, but um I'm no expert on this software either by the way. But um I'm just playing around with it a lot of the time. Um so yeah, there's all these other options here that um come default the core metrics um but yeah it's a really um cool little piece of software the old verb edit um, once you sync up your gps you can add things like transitions fade in fade out um soundtracks i've never really added any music so i don't really want it titles so if you want to add like halfway through the rides usually mine are um, when I stuff something up and I just say this one like gets me a lot like there's a lot of steep little pinches and stuff that I'm too many beers on the Saturday night beforehand um, so they'll just be little titles and stuff you can add to your videos and when you're just watching the video you can um you can just look at the map and see where it is that you're um that's kind of one way to test if the sync worked correctly rather than trying to stare at this little map on screen you just click the map option over here and just double check you synced all good but yeah that's pretty much it um, once you're ready to go you just hit export and um, it'll give you options based on what your raw video was branding just turn it off because you get the verb shit going on there and yeah export it takes a little bit of time sometimes depending on the length of your video but it should export fine and then you can chuck it on YouTube so um, yeah I think that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, chuck it in the comments. Um, hopefully this informed you about using your new GoPro Hero 8, which you quickly learnt. Didn't have any GPS software that comes with it or available online anywhere. Um, I don't know if that'll come out soon, hopefully, but yeah, that's, um, that's pretty much a workaround for actually using GoPro Hero 8 with its nice quality and um, still using the GPS overlays um, through Strava. So yeah. Strava, Garmin, and GoPro combining to form your video. Um, but yeah, hopefully that helped you. Hit us up if, it, um, if you have any questions, like I said. And yeah, I'll stop blabbering on. Catch us later. Enjoy.